Hi, and welcome to Dragon Way Farm. If this is your first time visiting this channel, thanks for taking the time to check us out. My name's Ginger, and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about chickens. Unless you guys have been living under a rock or you're vegan, you're probably aware that we're in somewhat of an egg crisis. In some places, the cost for a dozen eggs has gone up as much as 100% or more. The bird flu has hit the industry pretty hard with hundreds of thousands of birds being lost this year alone. So less birds equals less eggs, which equals less birds the next year, which is exactly what's happened. Hatcheries right now are having trouble filling orders for chicks this year. This could be in part because people are getting tired of overpaying for eggs at the grocery store and have decided that this is the year that they're going to start their backyard flock. But with the losses from the bird flu, there's also less chickens that are adding to the gene pool. So this is an unfortunate circumstance of increased demand and less supply. If you're one of the many people who've decided to dive into the wonderful world of chicken tending, that's right, some of us voluntarily choose the term chicken tender, you've come to the right place. This video is the first in a four part series on how to start your very first backyard chicken flock. Each week we will give you some tasks to complete in order to get yourself closer to owning that first flock. And we'll give you some tips and tricks to keep the cost down and some of the things to look out for. This week we're covering the prep work, deciding what types of chickens you want, where to get them, and some basic chicken info that'll help you get started on your path to chicken ownership. Aside from the obvious omelets for breakfast every morning, why should you even have chickens? Chickens are considered by many homesteaders to be the gateway livestock because how easy they are to maintain and they're actually relatively cheap compared to other forms of livestock such as like cows and goats and other things that people like to keep around. If you've ever wanted to keep chickens but you're worried that you just won't have the time for them, I'm here to tell you, please reconsider. Chickens require a very minimal amount of time and care. They're not really affectionate or crave human attention like a dog would, so you're not required to hang out in the coop for their mental health. Personally, I work a full-time job, so Monday through Friday, every morning I spend between five and 10 minutes opening up the coop, feeding and watering the chickens, and then I spend about five or 10 minutes in the evening when I get home locking up the coop, gathering eggs, and doing a head count since I free range my chickens so they might be subject to predators so I just want to make sure everyone's there every evening. So as you can see there's a bare minimum amount of time required. About once a month I'll go ahead and clean the coop and that takes about 15 to 30 minutes depending on how dirty it is. So not a whole lot there. Basically a dog or a cat would require more time and attention from you than a flock of chickens would. In addition to fresh eggs for your family, if you free range your chickens, they're really good at pest control. They'll happily eat fleas and ticks, and also grubs and larvae and things like that that will grow into parasites that you might not want around your home or garden. If you do happen to garden, chicken poo is a valued uh, fertilizer and compost. If all that wasn't enough, <laughs> there's something really relaxing and peaceful about watching chickens. I call it chicken TV, and I often find myself just watching the chickens uh, interact with each other throughout the day. It's mesmerizing, and while I haven't certified my chickens or anything like that, I definitely consider them my therapy chickens. And you might be surprised at how hard you fall in love with these amazing birds. One of the first things to ask yourself when you first decide to have chickens is, what do I want these chickens for? Do I want just eggs? Do I want meat birds? What's the purpose here? Do I want pest control? Am I gonna free range? All of these are good things to consider. Most people do get into chickens strictly for the eggs, but some of us do evolve into keeping meat birds. So there's three classes to consider. You have your layers, your broilers, and your dual purpose breeds. So your egg layers are bred for egg production. They are generally a smaller bodied bird and they mature quicker. Usually within four to five months, they begin laying as opposed to some of the heavier breeds, which might be six to eight months before their first egg. The layers are a smaller body. They generally eat less and just uh, lay more consistently. And they'll usually lay consistently throughout the year. No they take off minimal time during the winter time. 
and their production is just uh, usually very ramped up for eggs. Your broilers are going to be your meat birds. These guys are usually um, fast growing hybrid birds, so they will not breed true. And many grow so fast that they'll be unhealthy if they kept past their processing date. So some people that keep these birds uh, past their 16 or 18 week processing date, uh, their legs will get to the point where they can't support them or their organs will start to fail. So they're really bred just for meat. And then there are the dual purpose birds. These are like my lavender Orpingtons and my buff Orpingtons. These guys are a heavier breed of bird that lay consistently. They're not going to give you as much uh, meat as a broiler and they probably will not lay as many eggs as a high production layer like a leggern or something like that. But they are uh, competent in laying eggs and giving meat in a pinch if you need that. The next thing to consider is what age do you want your birds to be? Do you want an adult bird that's ready to lay right now? Those are gonna be a little bit harder to find this year because of the egg shortage. Um, a lot of uh, farms that have chickens are gonna be holding onto their layers just so that they can continue to have eggs. Laying hens can be found, but you're gonna have to hunt for them a little bit. And the downside is, is you're probably going to pay quite a bit more this year. Um, I just did a quick search and the going rate for laying hens in my area is about $25 a bird. But uh, that's one thing that you can look into. Uh, the plus side of getting a an adult hen is that you know that you're getting a hen that's already laying. There's no accidental roosters that are, you might get stuck with. Uh, the downside to it is you don't really have a whole lot of choice in breed. A lot of times if you find a laying hen, it's you're pretty much stuck with whatever they have available. If you can't find a laying hen or you're starting your chicken journey the way that most people do, you're gonna wanna look at day old chicks. A lot of people will order these off of the big hatcheries that will ship to them, which you can do, but fair warning, a lot of these guys are sold out right now or the wait times are going to be further into uh, summer. Because I also did a search last year at this time, I was able to get 25 chicks of whatever breed I wanted. Um, and I did, I got 25 chicks delivered last February. This year, the earliest uh, date that I could possibly get them as of two weeks ago was uh, June. June is the first ship date. So it's, it's quite a bit different this year. Uh, good bet for you is to check out your local uh, Facebook chicken sites. Uh, chicken groups on Facebook. A lot of them are starting to hatch. There's going to be a lot of backyard breeders and things like that. You can also check Craigslist and auctions in your area as well. Now is the time that people are putting eggs into incubators and hatching out chicks, so you should be able to find something. Uh, plus side is it's going to be cheaper than a laying hen. The downside is you might not be able to get the breed that you want, but usually speaking, if you do get chicks from a hatchery, um, you are going to be able to choose the breed that you want. And many of the larger hatcheries will also sex the birds for you, which means that um, if you want all hens or all females, you will get our ordering day old chicks. Uh, some of the terminology that you want to be aware of, okay, is uh, pullets are going to be your female chicks. Cockerels are going to be your roosters and straight run is a mix, whether it's either not sexed at all or it's a equal mix of roosters and uh, hens that are going to grow up. So you can look in into that and see if you want a few roosters, that's great. If not, you're gonna wanna look for pullets and, and try to avoid the straight run as much as possible. Uh, the last option, which is also the cheapest method, generally speaking, is to hatch your own chicks out. So all you need is an incubator and some fertilized eggs. Uh, you can find fertilized eggs uh, from hatcheries. They, all, they do sell them. eBay is another great place. Your Facebook chicken groups, again, people will be selling fertilized hatching eggs. Uh, the downside to uh, hatching your own eggs is that you have to wait. It's 21 days to hatch out a chicken. So it's not instantaneous and there is some work required. You do have to monitor the temperature and the moisture control. And there's a few things that you need to be aware of so that you don't mess up your hatch. And also when you, it's great to see the miracle of life, you, that is a plus side. You get to see the entire process. If you have kids, it's great. Um, the downside is that generally speaking, there's a 50-50 uh, split between boys and girls. So figure, 
Everybody wants the hens for the eggs, but you're probably gonna get half the amount of roosters, okay? So if you put 12 eggs into an incubator, you're probably going to figure on getting at least six roosters and at least six hens. So the problem becomes, what are we gonna do with those roosters? So that is a, a downside, but hatching your own eggs, it's fun and it's cheaper. And <laughs> so that's all I've got for you guys this time. Your homework for this week is to check your town's regulations for chickens. Uh, many towns do allow backyard flocks, but hens only. So that's something that you're definitely going to want to check on. If you are allowed to have roosters in your town, uh, I highly recommend adding one or two to your flock, depending on your flock size. Uh, roosters are great to have around. They offer an early warning system for predators. So they often keep an eye on the sky. They're not really going to fight off anything major, but they keep an eye on the sky and they alert the hens to any predators flying about and they'll kind of steer the flock to safety. Also, if you're in this for sustainability and food security, a rooster will offer you the opportunity to replenish your flock for years to come rather than purchasing new chicks every year or every couple of years. So keeping a rooster or two in your flock will often be cheaper in the long run. Your second task for this week is to decide what type of chicken that you want. Are you looking for eggs, meat, or both? So do some research and see if you may have a breed preference. In a pinch, and especially if you're shopping local, um, you're, the most common and cheapest type of chicken that you're going to find is called a barnyard mix. It's basically a mutt. So it could be pretty much anything. Um, a lot of backyard breeders will breed specifically for egg color. So if you get a barnyard mix, you may get uh, blue eggs or green eggs or speckled eggs or any different shades, whatever. Um, it can be pretty interesting and different uh, colors of feathers. So it, barnyard mixes are often a very colorful flock as well. So as long as there's absolutely nothing wrong with a barnyard mix, I think it's a great option and it's a great way to save some money when you're starting your flock. Um, as long as a hen is um, mature and healthy, they will lay eggs. So it's only um, the, uh, the size of the eggs, the frequency of the egg laying and the color of the eggs and basically the time that it takes for the hen to mature are the only variables that are affected by the breed. So a barnyard mix, great way to start. The last thing that I want you to focus on this week is figure out how many chickens you can reasonably handle. Chickens are social creatures, which means that even though they're not gonna crave human attention, they do require other chickens around for their own uh, safety and mental well-being. So you need a minimum of two chickens, but three to six is ideal for a small family flock. In part two, we will be going over setting up an incubator if you're hatching out chicks and how to choose your hatching eggs and to store them, and also some troubleshooting for any other issues that might come up during the incubation process, because though it should be straightforward, it's often not as easy as it sounds. So please don't forget to like and subscribe, and please share this uh, video with anyone that you know that might be starting a flock for the first time and might benefit from some of this information. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you next time.